child is brought to the OPD with delayed achievements of developmental milestones. He is able to walk with support but unable to walk independently. He says only monosyllable and plays with his sibling. He has just attained a pincer grasp. This is a child who is one and a half year old. Detailed history revealed that at his birth, his mother's age was 40 years. She had had an uneventful antenatal history. The baby was born at term, cried at birth and had a normal postnatal period. On examination, what did we find? Vitals were stable. Anthropometry showed a weight of 12 kgs and a length of 77 centimeters. Head circumference was 38 centimeters. On head to toe examination, these following findings were evident. There was a mongoloid slant of the eyes. Hypertelorism was present with epicanthic folds. Simian crease was present in both the palms. Sandal gap was noted in both feet. And the child had a short fifth digit in the hand with clinodactyly. In systemic examination, the central nervous system showed a developmental age of 9 months. There was generalized hypotonia with reflexes being just elicitable and plantars were flexor bilaterally. In cardiovascular system, S1, S2 was heard. There was also a pan-systolic murmur heard. Respiratory system, GIT system were normal. Musculoskeletal system showed hypermobility of the joints. So with this, we have had lots of positive features in this child. We have a child who has had delayed developmental milestones to start with. His mother is an elderly primary gravida mother. The child has been otherwise well with a normal birth, natal, postnatal history. Only the development has been delayed. On head to toe examination, there are lots of dysmorphic features. When we find features which are not like a normal child, they are called dysmorphic features. So the child has lots of dysmorphic features. And central nervous system examination shows significant hypotonia with hypermobility and laxity of joints and ligaments. So with this, what is the probable diagnosis in this child? So we have developmental delay, features of dysmorphism and an advanced age of the mother. Now these three, especially when we have features of classic dysmorphism, now the dysmorphism this child has is very specific of a particular syndrome. So this syndrome is called the Down syndrome. In Down syndrome, whatever dysmorphic features I have highlighted, the child looks exactly like that. So most children with Down syndrome, irrespective of their parentage, all the Down syndrome children essentially look like siblings. They all look very, very alike. That is the hallmark criteria of features of Down syndrome. So with this, what was the etiology of this? The etiology for this child developing Down syndrome was the fact that his mother's age was advanced 40 years at the age of delivery. And the risk of trisomy 21 is very high as there is advanced maternal age. So with that, let's go to the introduction of Down syndrome. Now Down syndrome is the commonest chromosomal anomaly with intellectual disability. It occurs due to the presence of an extra chromosome 21. Hence it is called trisomy 21. The incidence ranges from 1 in 733 to 1 in 1000 among live births. It has classical features which can be and so the essential essence of Down syndrome can be intellectual disability, congenital anomalies and characteristic dysmorphic features. All three together synchronize to form Down syndrome. The etiopathogenesis of Down syndrome. Now, out of 100 percentage of children with Down syndrome, 95 percent have trisomy of the 21st chromosome, which means three copies of the 21st chromosome instead of the normal two. Why does this happen? It occurs due to the non-disjunction of the 21st chromosome in the maternal meiosis, causing both the 21st chromosomes to enter into one haploid germ cell, while the other haploid germ cell does not have any 21st chromosome and that germ cell becomes not viable. 4% are due to translocations involving chromosome 13, 14, 15, 21 and 22. These are called Robertsonian translocation wherein a part of the 21st chromosome is attached to either the 13th, 14th, 15th or 22nd chromosomes and forms a different type of translocated chromosome. Those are the Robertsonian translocations. 1% are mosaic down syndrome. When we say mosaic down syndrome, it implies that the, all the cells are not the same. 
like the meaning of the word mosaic is different it's random so similarly in mosaic down syndrome some cells have 47 chromosomes and some cells have 46 chromosomes so that is what the one percent of down syndrome can be mosaic down syndrome now i'll just show you a diagram what is the meiotic non disjunction and what is the translocation in down syndrome now in meiotic non disjunction This is a normal maternal cell. Now, when it undergoes meiosis, it should form two cells. Each cell should have one copy of the 21st chromosome. Okay, so this is the normal meiosis, which is normal. Now, what happens when there is advanced maternal age? This is what happens when there is advanced maternal age. Both the chromosomes land up going to one haploid germ cell while the other germ cell does not have any 21st chromosome. So this is not viable. And this chromosome, when this haploid germ cell binds to the paternal chromosome with one haploid germ cell, it results in trisomy 21 because there will be three copies, two from the mother and one from the father for the 21st chromosome that is trisomy 21. So, 95 percent of the Down syndrome come like occur in this manner. Now, what happens in translocation Down syndrome? Now, 4 percent of Down syndrome come under translocation. So, what happens here is now here translocation Down syndrome parents will be translocation carriers. So, this is how they will carry. They will have one copy of 14th, one copy 21 and one copy the 1421 translocation. And so, when this undergoes meiosis, there are numerous possibilities. You can have one 14 and one 21. So, 1421 normal chromosomes will be one haploid germ cell. One can be the 1421 translocation and 14. So, 14, 21 translocated. What I will do, I will just color the 21st one just to make it evident. Okay. okay. So, you have one with the 14 and the 14, 21 and you have the other haploid cell which will be and the 14. So, 14, 21 and this will be with 14. So, these are the three types of haploid cells which are formed following the meiosis in a parent who is a translocation 1421 carrier. Now, when these bind to a normal cell, what happens is you can have various options. You can have a normal child where the other parent cell is normal. You can have a normal 14 and normal 21. So, you can have both normal 14 and normal 21, 14, 14, 21 and 21. Now, when you bind the translocations here, the translocated chromosome, the 1421 translocation where one side is 14, one side is 21, it will, it will bind with another 14, another 21. So, this can have, you will have trisomy, here you will have 21, here you will have 21. So, you can have trisomy 21. Along with this, you can also have trisomy 14, you can have monosomy 14. All of these are possible in translocation carriers when the parents are. So, in those patients, you can have numerous congenital anomalies when the parents are translocation carriers. So, this is translocation of Robertsonian translocation which occurs in 4 percent of parent of uh, children who have Down syndrome. This is what occurs in 4% of children who have Down syndrome.